guys welcome back to the channel so in this video we are going to talk about vpc endpoints so endpoints are basically a facility a service provided by aws which lets you connect to your vpc supported services privately uh, using the aws private network and the technology it uses to do so is called aws private link so we'll be talking about private link in a separate video itself so I'll not go into the details of private link, what private link is. So let's forget that. Uh, so what does that mean? What does that mean having uh, VPC endpoints? So suppose you want, you have an EC2 instance and you want to connect to S3. Normally the traffic would go via an internet gateway or a NAT gateway. So what VPC uh, endpoint does it, it removes the the dependency on either of these, uh, either of, I mean, either your NAT gateway or your internet gateway or your VPN endpoint. So you don't need the NAT gateway, the internet gateway or the VPN connection. You can privately go from EC2 instance to S3 bucket. So we'll see uh, in this uh, video itself, we'll see how we do that. Uh, it's just a blackboard lecture. So I'll just tell you the few theory points and then we'll continue to AWS console. So in nutshell, the traffic never leaves AWS network. So your traffic is completely private and it just uses the AWS backbone network to go to S3. There are two types of uh, basically endpoints. The first one is the gateway endpoint, which we'll see in this video. And the second one is the interface endpoint. So we'll talk about interface endpoints and the private link in the next video. So why was there a need to get two endpoints like gateway endpoint and interface endpoint? Why not just one? So this has some history behind, so I just want to let you know. So VPC endpoints, uh, the gateway endpoints were launched somewhere in 2015. That was for S3. And somewhere in 2017, they launched the endpoint for DynamoDB. Uh, and by that time, AWS didn't have uh, your, your network load balancers. So probably this was the main reason of having a gateway endpoint and not interface endpoint uh, on the intro of when the network load balances were introduced and uh, gateway interface endpoints were introduced at the very same time and so what aws did is it they created uh, basically a new kind of technology using the private link and the network uh, load balances so what it enabled is it let you expose your services and maybe consume them in some other VPC or region using the VPC endpoint services as well. So we'll see what VPC endpoint service as well. So when you're using a gateway endpoint, you cannot do that. But when you're using interface uh, VPC endpoints, you can consume those services outside your VPC using VPC endpoint services. So maybe a little confusing, but this has basically, this is basically related to history. So since AWS didn't have a network load balancer when they launched uh, the endpoints for DynamoDB and uh, S3, that is why they, they, we didn't have any uh, interface endpoints. So now since the technology is there, so gateway endpoints were no longer, but AWS didn't just let them go. We still have uh, two gateway endpoints, which is for DynamoDB and S3. But apart from that, all the other services, which I'll give you the list, have interface endpoints. So now let's go to our AWS console and start our lab for gateway endpoints. This is our AWS console. And as you can see, I have created two EC2 instances. So one EC2 instance is in my public subnet and the other one is in the private subnet. So we didn't have any bastion host or anything of that sort. So I created an instance in public subnet to get to my instance in private subnet. So you can see. So now next what I'm going to do is I'm going to create an IAM role which has access to S3 and then I'm going to attach that role to my EC2 instances. So I'll go to roles create role it would be a service role uh, for permissions i'll probably select s3 full access and give it and then give this role a name can be any name and 
think that should be good create the role so what next i'm going to do is i'm going to attach this role to my ec2 instances so that i have access to s3 So my instance in public sub subnet should be able to go to S3 via the internet gateway, but my instance in private subnet shouldn't be able to go to S3 because it doesn't have any NAT gateway attached to it. So it should be able to go to S3. So I'm attaching the role to my instances. Once that is done, so I'm basically going to connect to my instance in public subnet. I'll just copy the connection string, go to my terminal and connect. And I'm doing key forwarding so that when I log in to my instance in private subnet i don't need the key on to that machine so i'm just doing some key forwarding so now from here i'm going to run aws s3 ls and i should be able to go to s3 because this is my public subnet this is the instance in public subnet sorry now i'll go to instance in private subnet and do the same thing and i shouldn't be able to reach s3 so let's log in to the instance in private subnet SSH and I'm denied permission so okay so I know what what's wrong so I'll go to my Mac terminal and I haven't added this key in my SSH, SSH agent so I need to add the key into my SSH agent so I'm just adding that and now I should be able to log in so if you miss that step I'll log in again i'm just checking if the key is there so you can see the key is there now i'll log in to my instance in public subnet From here, I should be able to go to my instance in private subnet. And now I'll run the same command to see if I'm able to reach S3. So these are Linux, uh, Amazon Linux. So AWS CLI is already there. And you can see I'm not able to go to S3. So now what I'm going to do is create VPC endpoint and attach it to my instance in private subnet. So go to VPC, go to endpoints, so I'll select my VPC and go to endpoints. Okay, so I'm just checking my route table and you can see in my route table, I have a route to internet gateway, the instance and public subnet was able to go. But in my private route table, uh, so NAT I deleted in my last lecture, so it's showing as a black hole. That is why the instance private subnet is not able to go to S3. Now I'm going to endpoints and I'll create and I'm just checking, double checking my subnet for my private instance. And go back to VPC. Go to endpoints, create endpoint, and just look for S3. It should be a type gateway. You can see the type gateway. Select it, select the VPC, and now I need to select the route table. So AWS will automatically create route for me in this route table. Uh, policy, I'm not using any custom policy. I'm just leaving it as default. So we'll talk about policy. It's basically used to restrict access. So I mean, any policy in AWS is used to restrict access, but we'll talk about policy in details. And now you can just create endpoint. Go 
go to route table go to my select the AVPC basically go to my private route table go to routes and it will take some time for route to appear maybe a couple of minutes so you can see the route is here now and it is something starting with PL and you can see the IPs of S3 buckets as well, S3 service as well so now when I go to my private instance and do the same thing AWS S3 LS you can see I'm able to reach my S3 service from my instance in private submit so this is the major uh, use of AWS VPC endpoints so I hope you like this video so this is it for this video guys thank you for watching